गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून लाइट लेट्स स्टार्ट ऑफ थैंक यू डिड यू हैव अ वंडरफुल गुड आफ्टरनून मैम हु इज दिस who is the small child okay good afternoon okay i uh, how was your previous class uh, can you tell me any one of you excuse me ma'am sir ma is uh, discontinued by the sir because of the irresponsible behavior of the students ma'am mm. the students uh, could not mute Uh, especially two of the students participants mm. Mm. so sir really got offended and he got irritated and he left the class uh, mm. so you uh, you you are enjoying that okay you should enjoy it because you are all behaving like like first year first class second class students also don't behave like that i'm telling you even uh, every every child now is used to online classing cla- classroom uh, learning teaching experience now stop will you please stop chatting unnecessary unnecessary chatting should not happen just stop just listen that is all you are making us all very angry konda sir is such a busy busy person he is a director of ouse he had i requested him to take your class because somebody else was on leave so he couldn't say no to me and he came to the class leaving behind his busy schedule you behave like this why don't you really know that the you know uh, you should keep your mics turned down off 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 video off 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 don't talk just listen just listen that is all take notes take notes that's all no some of you are misbehaving in such Uh, you know such a manner that it's causing severe concern among all the teachers every teacher is a senior professor i am telling you every teacher is a senior professor and everyone i requested personally and you are all misbehaving like this it it, it appears to me as if i'm talking to a 7th class or 8th class uh, student community you are doing your pg i don't know why you have come all the way to do your pg don't ever repeat don't chat unnecessarily if anybody chats also like include me in the whatsapp group rename please uh, devices name change what is the topic she is talking which page number that kind of silly talk also i, I don't want just keep that chat box closed only if i ask you you should answer that is all only if the teachers ask you should answer that is all otherwise just listen you are making everyone you know and every one of them is complaining everyone is calling me because i am the coordinator how unruly the students are what is their age well, i don't know what your age is are you i think 6 years old i should find out but 6 year old people are not allowed to do pg behave like you know mature people grown up you know, what are the silly things that you ask for age numbers and all of that whatsapp groups and all you can talk later no i don't want anyone to um, even open their mouths just listen i am angry because i am receiving complaints and i am not well for the past 4 days i am eating dono every day eating and i am doing all this no na kitna la we know the children kitna manushla mere asal pillala Let me know complete his business. 
you want to do your business you want to clean your vessels you want to wash your clothes you do that uh, we are listening to the uh, sounds of utensils we are listening to the sounds of children crying we are listening to the uh, washing machine whirring we are listening to your all business talk we are not here to do to listen to all that every one of us here is a senior senior professor and we are all very busy with our own schedule we are actually spending extra time for you remember that and please do not repeat now let's go to things fall apart where, where wherever we left yesterday we understood we understood that okwanko Uh, uh has built his personal life his professional life in a very uh, systematic manner and he wanted to prove himself as a successful person because he was always haunted by the uh, weak points vulnerable points of his father that's one important point then we understood that he has three wives and his um, older boy noe uh, is so afraid of his father that he never comes to in, in front of his father to talk he always stands behind his mother and then uh, he spends most of the time with the sisters playing with the little toys and not so inclined towards masculine hard work or getting trained under wrestlers he is not showing that and uh, okwanko is unhappy and his uh, daughter is very smart and enterprising ja, uh, unlike his son uh, the then uh, there is there is one important uh, point that happens here very important episode in the life of okwanko which is considered to be the first uh, a step towards his downfall uh one uh, the the village the neighbor the neighboring village uh some uh, problem okay um one boy from the neighboring village he enters into the village of um this uh, i know crime and he rapes and kills a girl which is considered a serious crime and a serious sin and uh, how do they resolve this this is murder and rape and murder uh, and uh, um, okwanko and his friend obirika obirika is okwanko's friend and obirika is a very um, uh, you can call him the example of true friendship so obirika and others are the elders of the community so they all go to the other neighboring village to seek justice to see not justice we can say vengeance but the uh, villagers are scared of okonkwo they know of his mighty power so they say we cannot fight with you we will let, let us resolve this with let us compromise whatever you ask for we will give you we don't want to go for a war because we know the result is definitely going to be on your side the success is on your side because okwankwo is on your side that is the popularity that is the fame that okwankwo enjoyed even in the um, villages around so finally they decide that one girl uh, a virgin to be sent uh, uh, so that the husband who had lost his wife okay uh, would marry her next some uh, cowries like uh, the money currency is uh, the currency is counted uh, the denomination of it is cowry and some cowries and one hen then one boy young boy young boy uh, maybe no to ex in exchange some some kind of an exchange this is the package they uh, the people ask for they readily agree and the one girl is selected so the elders themselves select 
then one boy, young boy, you know, eight years, nine years boy, old boy, very young, nice kiddish fellow. That boy is Ikime Fiona. Ikime Fiona. So this boy is given to uh, now Oberika's village. Now, when uh, the boy is so small, he doesn't even understand the implication behind him, uh, behind he being taken to a different village uh, by some strangers uh, and then why his mother was crying as she had to leave the child and how she was holding on to a little baby sister and the pain in her eyes only that the boy could register but what why he was being taken, he doesn't know. That young, this boy is. So this boy is brought to this village. Now everyone, uh, so this girl is given away to the boy who had lost his wife. Now the cowries and all of that are given away to the village priest. The village priest is called the oracle. Okay. And uh, now, what about the boy? What should be done with the boy? Nobody knows. Why they have asked for, they don't know. They just asked for. In a heat, moment of heat. Now the boy is with them. What to be done with the boy? Okay, let us take a decision later. Until then, we will keep this boy in Oberika's house because Oberika is rich to feed an extra mouth. Oberika, please take care of this boy. Take him with you and give him food and take care of him as your own son because we have not taken any decision regarding this boy. Okay, Oberika takes this boy home. Now this boy is so totally confused. Okay, why is the uh, no, shifting homes, why he is being taken, he doesn't understand. And when he comes into Oberika's compound, uh, slowly, uh, you know, days, three days, four days, five days, he doesn't take any food, he cries and he withdraws and very uh, agitated, scared and poor boy. We understand, no? Very clearly. It's like um, very painful for the boy and the mother as well. So, um, uh, now uh, this boy, Ikime Fiona, starts uh, go, becoming uh, the first wife of America is a very lovely lady. She takes this boy as her own son, gives him good food and then uh, nourishes him well and talks with him. And then uh, she makes Noe her own son. Okay. And Ikime Fiona play together, go out to fields and then when at the time of you know going to bed, she puts them, uh, two, two, two of them on either side of her bed and then uh, tells them, narrates them bedtime stories. So these bedtime stories are so important. Why? Because the writer Chinua Achebe wants to declare to the world that we also have our stories. We have stories where, you know, how man entered, how man was created, how uh, sun was created, how ra rain was created. These are all our mythology, our history, our geography, our culture. So, uh, mythology should, not, should never be read in isolation. Mythology should always be looked up at as a document which, uh, uh, which holds uh, history, culture, uh, every other every other uh, aspect of religion uh, within its folds. That is the importance of mythology. So if you read, for example, the Ramayana, you would know when it happened uh, and then the message of the story. And in the same way, they also have short uh, uh, stories where every story has a message. So let the children listen to such stories and understand, grasp the moral message and then imbibe them as their you know, value system, within their value system. And this boy, Ikime Fiona, slowly forgets his own home. Days are passing by, months are passing by. So the love that he received, Noe and um, you know, Noe's mother, that is first wife of uh, uh, Okwango, and then other sisters, okay? And uh, he, he, he stopped, he now almost had forgotten the face of his mother and uh, the little sister. 
but he is happy here. Hmm? Now Okwanko starts uh, uh, liking this boy. This boy, Ukme Fiona, he, he behaves so well in a very decent, dignified manner. He knows uh, how to go about his body language, his language, his uh, personality, his character, all are so powerful at such a, such, a, such a young age. How could this boy demonstrate such kind of personality is what, it may, uh, is what Okwanko is really amazed at. What his son is missing, what Noye is missing, is uh, uh, you know is exactly seen in Ikme Fiona. So automatically he starts uh, loving this boy, and the boy also starts calling him father, 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 and then mother uh, Noye's mother as mother. So it's now accepted, and uh, the whole village starts accepting. The boy becomes a part of the family. Noye is happy. Uh, everyone is happy. Years and days, uh, years pass by. And everybody thought that this is over. Mm -hmm. There is no... Uh, everybody has forgotten. Then one day evening, Oberika comes and tells, Okwanko, you may have to, uh, you know, bring the boy out tomorrow. The elders have decided. But remember, you should not be a part of the team. Because this boy is calling you father. So there is uh, this family relationship which has entered between you and the boy. So you should not be there. You just hand over the boy to us. We will take care of the rest. When uh, Oberika leaves, the entire house becomes lull and silent. Because it's very evident Every, everyone has understood. No A has understood. Now the boy has grown up and he understood that something wrong is going to happen with Ikme Fiona. They are going to do something bad to him. Noe's mother has such great affection for Ikme Fiona that she starts crying. Okay? Uh, everybody in the house cries. This boy doesn't understand. Ikme Fiona doesn't understand. Why is everyone so silent? Why is everyone so grave? And uh, as if they are so... Uh, uh, anxious, uh, no, they are very anxious. So, this boy doesn't understand. Next morning, Oberika and the other elders come and stand in front of Ikme uh, sorry, uh, Oberik, uh, Okwankwa's house. Then Okwankwa brings Ikme Fiona out and says, I'm also coming with you. Then Oberika warns him, Ikime, uh, you know, you cannot come, Okwankwa. This boy has called you father. But Okwanko says, no, I am coming. And then he follows the team. There are uh, four or five elders. And uh, you can see how Noye is crying in the backyard loudly. And uh, Noye's mother is also crying behind the, in, in, behind the walls within the kitchen. Because they know the impending doom, what's going to happen. And every uh, the team as it starts walking towards the forest. Ikime Fiona is uh, happily walking, you know, uh, looking around at the birds, chirping. Uh, he listens to the chess music uh, uh, given by the birds and he's looking at the flowers and he's enjoying it. Poor boy. Then uh, uh, these elders are not talking to one another. It is so silent. Uh, um, and the boy, no, the walk is continuing, continuing, continuing. And so the boy first he thinks that, okay, they are taking me to my, my village. Then it strikes to him that, okay, they are going to take me to my village. <laughs> then he starts, you know, happily imagining the face of his mother. How much ever he tries, he is not able to recall the face of his mother. Uh, okay, how, how old my sister would be now? She doesn't even know that uh, she has a big brother. And so that happiness is surging from within. Every cell and atom of his body is going to see his mother. Uh, will she be standing at the doorway? Uh, will she be holding my sister? Uh, such. But it, it is like after some time, the silence, the silence is so deafening. It is so um, fearsome. I mean, it is so uh, scary. Uh, that why, why this silence? This boy can't ask. Suddenly they come to a point in the forest, as if this is a demarcated place. 
then they all stop by they don't talk to anybody as if this is a premeditated act they just surround the boy and the boy is confused now why are they all surrounding me what is the problem okay uh he looks at his father ogongo he looks at his father in you know hope that his father would protect that's what a, a, every child looks up to and then suddenly these people draw out weapons all of them at one go then this boy understands that they are going to kill him. this boy is now grown up no he knows and then he understood immediately he runs towards okonko father 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 they are killing me and he please protect me and they and he goes and hugs his father's legs taking protection you know at that point okonko without a second thought he brings out his sword and beheads the boy the boy's head is fallen apart and Okwanko throws the sword, and in a huff, he walks back home. Walks fast, fast, and then he goes into his hut, closes the door, and doesn't come out for three days. He cries and cries and cries and cries in the closed walls. He did not show. He did not show his weakness. It, you know, to establish himself as a very strong person, he went to this extent of killing the boy who started calling him his father. He didn't show any uh, affection, though he had it so much. We understood that he loved this boy, and he didn't even uh, stop himself. He killed the boy. Went into the house, closed his hut. Didn't have his food. Didn't have water. Didn't speak with anyone. And he cried and cried and cried. Now, why? Why did he do this? He only he he, he see if he had he could have stopped going with the team. Number one, Oberika already told him, "Don't come." He has called you father. It is a sin to kill him. That is what he meant. But he said, "No, I'll come." Why? Had he stayed back, the whole village will would have said, "Okay, Oberika is showing soft nature. Okay, he has become gentle. We have never seen his gentle side. How come suddenly he had uh, uh, become very kind, soft like a woman?" He didn't want that. You you try to understand the aggressive nature of a Kuang Kuo. This is his issue. This is his problem. anger he could he could never uh, control and to accept in his position he is going to any extent but even to cry he didn't want to do it openly he cried inside the hut and didn't eat and the wife also understood how much uh, the food is being taken and put there the food is there in the plate untouched water untouched Three days later, Oberika comes and knocks on the door of Okwanko's hut. Okwanko is lives in a separate hut. You all know that, and three and surrounded by his wives and wives' huts. And so he comes out, and Oberika, when he sees Okwanko, he is so shocked, as if you know suddenly overnight Okwanko has become older by thirty forty years. That is the pain. You know that is the trauma, that is the uh, suffering that Okwangwo underwent by closing himself and by you know not sharing the suffering with anyone. One look at his face; it is so puffed up. His eyes are red, like you know, bloodshot, and you know there are wrinkles on his face as if you know twenty, thirty years of age has just passed in three days, and he has bent forward like. he has no 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 power and strength and stamina in him he comes out and sits he comes out and he sits with oberika oberika said you you shouldn't have done this 
the whole village is accusing you that you have committed a sin this is a sin and the village priest is unhappy whole village is unhappy why couldn't you stay back we are all there as elders he just then the priest comes and okwangpo looks at the priest and how much should i pay as compensation okay they have to pay no two two hens one uh, goat and uh, 100 cowries and yams and all of that he is ready with them so he doesn't want to uh, extend the topic he just says how much do you want should i pay and of all that is paid then he turns to oberika and asks when is your daughter getting married that's all he doesn't want to extend the topic then oberika says yes the wedding is planned for uh, you know it is scheduled around 3 4 days later okay come let's go that's all he ends it there you try to understand the character uh every situation every experience every episode that we are passing through in the life of okwangwo along with him we are able to analyze interpret his character and then the festivities the the wedding festivities begin how a wedding takes place in their family in their community how importance is given to a girl and how beautiful a girl is you know uh, when she decorates herself with all the jewelry beads and all other ornaments and accessories and how uh, the boy is side they look up to her as a princess and the girl demands dowry how beautiful and then uh, there is some uh, bargain and finally the dowry is fixed and the date is fixed and there is full celebration and during the celebration uh, the songs and music and dance and oh so nice okay so everyone no every person in the village participates in whatever uh, uh, you know um, event that is whatever program that is every villagers villager participates and if it is death they all come if it is wedding they all participate everything and it is like a community service the, the society is a very close knit society and uh, you understand that uh, the wedding process the rituals the ceremonies are also well mean they full of meaning and the songs that women sing at the time of decorating the girl readying her for her wedding and uh, no the girl has the dreams and they sing the uh, what kind of dreams that this girl is uh, um, trying to fulfill very beautifully the wedding takes place so this is an episode where we get to understand that they have wonderful beautiful rituals then the harvest festival comes harvest festival is very important for them it means that they are uh, they the monsoon is going to set and they should all be ready for the uh, how i mean to till the land to sow the seed and all the agricultural related activities and uh, for before that they all practice one weeks peace week peace week one full week they should follow practice peace nobody should be angry nobody should bring anger upon the mother earth because you are going to deal with the mother earth and if you bring anger upon her you will only be cursed by the mother earth you will not have rains you will not have good harvest you will not flourish so this is how they gave importance to uh, the cycles of nature and also seasons and agriculture so for years together nobody has ever violated the rule nobody became angry but one day okwanko becomes very angry with his third wife because he is waiting for the third wife to come and give him food and she has forgotten and so he jumps uh, uh, no he runs after her that's a simple reason okay she has forgotten she is uh, happily doing her hair okay and so when he comes out to check on her she has almost uh, com- completely forgotten about the food so she is uh, plaiting her bra- uh, her hair then he runs after her she jumps over the wall and he throws something at her but very fortunately it misses the mark and she is alive this is a, another point where he has broken the rule 
he had broken the rules twice until now one by killing the boy who has called him father you should not kill anybody from your family it's the sin next you should not break the rule of the peace week he has broken it by hitting his wife next third episode an old man dies very old and these people give a lot of importance to old people or ancestors because they uh, the old people are the bridges between the present world and the uh, other world so they are well respected and if an old man dies it is like a celebration they don't mourn over the death of an old person they they beat the drums they play music they dance they drink they they oh, whatever they want to they will do because they are sending this man to the other world where the ancestors are waiting he is going to tell them that see your people your children are all so happy they are enjoying they are uh, they are uh, uh, they are uh, you know um, every year their wealth wealth is growing and their families are growing and the community is growing so somebody has to carry the message to the ancestors so this old man is carrying the message who has died just now so it is a celebration they don't cry look at the way the perspective and they are happy that okay he has joined the league of our ancestors good they will now look from uh, from the other world they will bless us and as this um, celebration is going on and there are weapons you know they use weapons to blow the weapons and um, to throw the weapons it's like a it's like a frenzy mad frenzy that is the that is the sign uh, that the, the, the kind of enjoyment you know? so akwanko is carrying a, a kind of a gun i don't know whether it is a, it is a, uh, an advanced or not definitely it is not advanced but there is a gun in his hands and he is shooting it into the sky, into the open uh, space and he has in he has he is drunk he is heavily drunk and uh, he is like mad happiness there is celebrations you uh, know uh, that's why he didn't even care which way he is shooting it was an accident and the bullet went and it struck the son of the dead man and that son also died this is the worst violation again third violation of the community so you cannot kill a person from your own community it is a sin he killed twice one ikime fiona from his as a family member another his own clansman which you should not do it's a sin so he is the account of his sin is growing up it's going up and this is the worst there is no redemption there is no package you cannot give 200 bags of cowries rice wheat and all of that 100 goats uh, please excuse me nothing you give 100 buffaloes he will take he will you give him 100 oxen he will take but you should be banished from your village and somebody being banished from your own village excommunicating you from your own community is a, is the worst punishment especially for a person like okwanko okwanko wanted to establish himself as a very popular famous figure and he tried his best worked very hard to reach this destination he reached it but he couldn't he couldn't protect it why why couldn't he protect it because of his own character flaw in his character mistake in his character what is that flaw anger arrogance pride these are bringing him down okay first he shouldn't have killed ikme if you know that's the worst sin only to show only to show off that is a that he is his heart is very strong and he cried then the village elders decide that you should be sent your you should you should go away to your mother's native place stay there for 7 years 
and come back until then you should not even look at your village this this place you shouldn't even look at this place okay they have decided to send him and what a setback what a what a great tragedy now for ikmefuna sorry for okwanku why let me switch the fan on please no don't talk i'm just one second i'm coming back okay so now uh okwanko has now it he is now forced to do carry all that uh, no 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 sorry he cannot carry anything with him nothing nothing his house all that property uh, his cattle everything is confiscated by the by the community's elders okay and uh he has to carry his wife three wives children with just nothing in his hands go back to his mother's village and uh, seek protection there in the village of his mother uh, uh, and uh, meet his uncle uncle who is mother's brother and ask for you know permission to stay until the punishment uh, statement uh, i mean that that is over what a pain what a pain whatever he tried doing has just ironically crumbled you know it has come crumbling down he whatever he wanted to establish it all came down it's his own doing it is his own doing that's the first part first part of the text is over it means that this is before the entry of the white man okay first part is before the entry of the white man and we have thoroughly understood the character of okwankwo in the first part and how his downfall started in a very systematic manner and how his uh, ultimate downfall had taken place because of his own arrogance sheer negligence carelessness pride ego anger he never showed any softness soft side of his character to anybody the second chap second part is mother's village babanta is his mother's village so he gathers everybody there and then his uncle is so good you can stay here as long as you want to i will give you a little land you can start your um Ganesh, please switch your. Okay, now, now uh, he it, it is such a pain. Uh, then uncle says, "No, don't worry. You can rebuild. You have that capacity. Don't lose hope." And so for uh, here again, he starts off, and then his daughter is in my is growing into a beautiful girl. His other daughter is also growing well. Uh, Noye is a little. away from his father he is continue he continues to keep himself away from his father especially after ikime funas death no he stopped talking with his father after ikime ikime uh, in the beginning initial days also he never had any positive rapport with his father that's very clear to all of us but today we know that no he almost cut off any ties whatever is with his father after ikme funas death of how uh, after the killing of ikme funa by his own father okwanko then uh no he is slowly 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 going out out from the house coming late uh, uh, and uh, like any spoiled child of that age girls are going doing well they are learning good things and uh, again uh, okwanko is building up and you know about his capacity his physical capacity determination and so he is beautifully again reconstructing and uh, you know what happened after this family left the uh, village his house his compound his cattle everything was burnt down it is a rule of the community it is a principle of the community to clean the place where the sin has been committed so he doesn't have anything back now after he comes 
again he start he should start constructing his compound again he should bring buffaloes and cows and all of that he has to start all over what is he doing here is to uh, agriculture he is continuing with the help of his uncle one year later oberika comes oh he feels so happy on seeing oberika he hugs and they have good dinner and then oberika sits down and then tells uh, uh, what is what is happening in our village no our village is fine but uh, you know in in, in our uh, village closer by we have heard that uh, a man who is very white you know like a diseased man uh, he was seen moving around so they killed him they they suspected that he is an alien so they killed him later three four men came and then they uh, now they came with uh, weapons and uh, guns and uh, the cut that uh, um, village is now under the control of the white man so verika is so unhappy uh, uh, verika is unhappy okay okonko is unhappy how can this happen how can you allow an alien to come how can you do this um you know how did you uh, how did you allow this to happen ha had i been there okonko is uh, grinding his teeth and his muscles are now tearing open with anger he says had i been there no i wouldn't have allowed this to happen the very first white man would have just bitten the dust under my forceful leg let me come back and i will take care of the rest so he is so angry the how can anybody come and take over us how are we becoming so women women like how are we allowing all this to happen then again next year next year america comes and meets and then one day america says see our village is also now under the white man one day the white man came he said uh, he wants some place for uh, his church we gave him the evil forest we thought that he will die the next morning but he was very much alive and he started preaching uh, most of our villagers are joining saying that this is a new religion and then uh, suddenly one day they said this is the government and that we all should pay taxes and we don't carry the same amount of produce back to our homes but half 10% 15% we are paying to the government and the rest is for us so almost colonization went deep into every village of nigeria then okwanko uh, last year like next year i am going back to my place so this year you uh, know i should plan for a big feast uh, to you know, thanksgiving to my uncle and he is so ang anxious he is so thrilled he is so excited why because his girls are so beautiful now they are grown up they are so beautiful they are so well behaved and uh, they uh, you know can we if, if he takes them into the village everybody looks at them and oh wow okwanko you have such beautiful daughters oh okwanko you have not lost anything in fact you have gained mm -hmm. they will all be waiting for me let me go there and then i will look at this what this white man is doing i will kick him out all of that he is waiting suddenly oberika comes and tells do you know where is your son she said no i don't have no idea he he doesn't come regularly home because he is moving with the white men and he is attending the church and he has become so close to the church that he almost has converted into christian and uh, you know, he embraced christianity and he is also taking classes he has become so you know well versed in the bible that he is conducting sunday school okwanko oh, is now it's like a rage you know he is so furious like his nerves might break open any time he never never anticipated that his son would turn uh, down on him one day like this by embracing a strange religion and kick him on his own face and that who oh, foolish is my son i can't call him my son he is dead he is dead to me now he doesn't uh, one i have all, all killed one he is dead he he you know he is no longer uh, there for me so let him die in that alien religion
so when uh, so knowing when he comes back home later uh, not knowing that his father had come to know about his christian leanings a confrontation happens and uh, noe says see i have many questions you, uh, you your religion is not giving me any answers my questions are ikke fem ikke me funeral death or no when twins are born why are they thrown into the forest and uh, if somebody commits suicide why are they thrown into the forest these are the questions that my religion here is not answering but christianity is giving me freedom that is why i am comfortable there don't ask me ever to come back i am going to continue so then uh, okwanko says okay fine it's the deal is over you are not my son any longer in the place and so the son is gone forever okay he has lost his uh, you know how slowly tragedy is seeping into the life of okwanko you should understand one after the other one after the other every episode is so important and every episode is tragic in nature which is affecting him which is affecting his personality which is affecting his uh, social status okay now uh, let, let's move now the th- second chapter is over that is second part is over so second part if you observe it is the entry of the white man the first part is before the entry of the white man second part is the entry of the white man now the third part is okwanko going back to his village and you know how what kind of uh, an anticipation he has he thought people would all queue up outside the village on the outskirts of the village waiting for him with bouquets of flowers and you know fruits and then they would all hug him and say oh kwanko we miss you oh kwanko welcome back he was anticipating such kind of grand welcome he reached the village nobody noticed him this is the truth this is the reality no person is indispensable in this world you know it is it is such a uh, bubble bubble like life our life is like a water bubble we we you know we are like filled with ego once that there is a prick the bubble just blasts and where where are we we don't we don't have any existence where is the bubble after that is it after the piercing you can't even tell where it is it because it doesn't have any physical or con- concrete form in the same way our you know our popularity fame and all of that are like ego bubbles poor fellow okwanko he thought people would queue up for him nobody even noticed so he was so uh, crestfallen and and he thought okay let me go construct my house slowly they will come but nobody has come to greet him a uh, randomly okay omrika came rand because he's a good friend a poor fellow he came and the others have you know they, they just didn't bother about okonko coming back because everyone has become so busy why have they become busy why weren't they busy earlier 7 years ago because they were doing only the traditional jobs today whatever the white man gives them all the uh, advanced modern jobs which gives them quick money this is what they all have uh, you know gotten to got attracted to and they are so busy with their own money earning that they don't want to welcome anybody they don't mind anybody now bhagwanko who bhagwanko i think i have heard of his name that's all bhagwanko uh, yeah he was there poor fellow that aggressive fellow this is how this is the reality this is a big lesson for all of us <coughs> okay now then what happens is um Uh, yeah some traditions are still uh, yeah i should tell you about one tradition which is very important now it comes it comes to the forefront one is the annual ancestral festival the annual ancestral festival is so significant in the lives of all the community members what do they do is on that day particular day they pray to their ancestral spirits 
and they cook food for their ancestral spirits and the elders of the community they wear masks not our uh, not our corona masks but the wooden wooden masks okay uh, where the entire face is completely covered revealing the identity of the person so these uh, village elders they wear the masks come and sit down in the village center where all the villagers come and then they start uh, dancing music and all of that then the spirits come and uh that the, the spirits descend upon these elders like in our bonalu jatra how the spirits of the mother comes and descends upon the people there in the trance in the same way they, these uh, these uh, ancestral spirits come and they possess the uh, descend upon the elders and the elders who are masked okay mask is very important because nobody should see the face of the uh, elder when he is <clears throat> possessed by the ancestral spirit it is very holy it is very uh, highly consecrated service one newly you know new being you can call him new entry into christianity uh, one boy from among the same community uh, who was following pra practicing all these rituals for all these years who found meaning in those rituals all these years suddenly when he took to christianity he started uh, you know making fun of these rituals and he went to such an extent that he directly went on to the place where all the elders are sitting and people are offering you know um, <clears throat> food and all he goes and rips the mask off the face of an of the elder, of the elder who has been possessed by the ancestral spirit this is sheer audacity and this is desecration of the ancestral spirits so all the elder uh, all the elders who are wearing masks and uh, they cover uh, they circle around the man whose mask has been ripped apart they circle around him and take them take him away into a hut <coughs> oh villagers all then this boy he feels so proud that see uh, there there is no meaning in uh, uh in their rituals their traditions they are all false fake empty and all of that till last year he was there suddenly this uh, uh, new entry into church made him uh, you know look down upon the a old age customs now we should respect our old age customs no they have some meaning why did i say meaning you should respect your ancestors you should have a special day for your ancestors you should remember them you should manam kuda peddalki antam kada atla so you are remembering them let them be happy you know the spirits will be happy and they will bless us so that is the meaning uh, he said there is no meaning and uh, uh, people were so angry with this boy they wanted to pounce upon him but this boy runs into the church and takes shelter there he thought that nobody comes into the church and that night the entire village could not sleep because the spirits of the ancestors in hundreds have descended upon the village and they started crying wailing kinds of you know voices they were moving around very very loud cries everybody could hear everybody shut Uh, themselves inside because they were so scared to even make a sound if you make a sound you would attract the wrath of your ancestral spirit so keep quiet that's all so the church pastor for the first time he was also worried he was like oh, oh maybe you know um, this is the truth now we unnecessarily have blamed them uh, then the next day the people the villagers said they have gone too much they cannot uh, they cannot insult our ancestors this is gross humiliation of our tradition and culture so let's go and give them a fitting reply so what is this fitting reply go burn the church down so they go and then they rip the church down raise it to the ground now this is this is one episode which which is very very you know critical they have 
raged the church down because they were upset over the humiliation of the ancestral spirit. Okay, who came from the church? A fellow came. He got back into the church. No, that's why we are uh, giving it back to them. Then the district commissioner, a white man, comes to know of this. So he say, he he says he thinks to himself, okay, now if you allow this to happen, tomorrow they will bring down all the churches. Tomorrow next day they will start uh, uh, throwing, sh sh shutting our uh, government offices. They will they will uh, uh, they will close our law order system. Everything will be over now if we allow this to happen. Let the whole community, not just here, but for 100, 200 kilometers, everybody should know what has happened. Then they, he issues one uh, order and uh, people, uh, the soldiers go and bring the elders. Who are the elders? They just tell, see the district commissioner wants to talk to the elders. So the elders felt, okay, very proud. Okay, now the district commissioner wants to talk to us. They all went. Once they are taken to the district commissioner's office, elders, one of America and Okwanko, both of them are there within the elder community. Okay. There the kind of treatment, torture and uh, calling them names, humiliating them and not even allowing them to pass urine, not even allowing them to defecate, making them sit, squat for days. This is the this is the punishment that the district commissioner gives. The whole village is now upset. What happened? What will happen? Are they going to kill our elders? What is going to happen? Will they come back alive? Nobody knows what is happening. The young boys are going and standing in from the village, going and standing in front of the uh, district commissioner's office. No news is coming out because nobody is there to give them any news because they are just young boys. Then the district commissioner, you know, after three days, um, he says, okay, I will leave you. You should not meddle with our matters, but you should send 300 bags of cowries as compensation. So they send one messenger. The messenger, mediator, mediator, messenger, it goes and the bags from 300, they go up to 1000 or so. We don't, I don't remember the correct number, so please don't take the number. They just multiply. And everybody in the village, you know, they raise the money. They you know everyone, including uh, uh, daughter of uh, uh, of Kwanku, she she wants her father back. Now Noe is never to be seen again. He has just gone in the second chapter itself. He has vanished. And finally, the money is paid. After the money is paid, these people all, you know, in utter shame. After after facing being subjected to such kind of humiliation how can anybody walk with the heads up so they have just hung their heads down and walked into the village all the villagers their family members are all waiting in great anxiety you know nobody is talking to anybody they just you know uh, if the first house is oberika oberika would go inside and a group of people follow Brika. Then Okwanko. Group of people follow Okwanko. Then another person. Group of people. It's like that. Then Okwanko says, let us have a meeting in the evening. We should now start questioning the authority. It is our village. It is our land. We have been li living here and our ancestors have given here, given us this land. That is why, that is why I am telling you, ancestors are very important. Uh, ancestors have given this land and we have been very happily living in great harmony with the nature, environment. And this man comes, an alien from somewhere across the oceans, and he establishes uh, his, uh, his uh, power and he rules over me. He exploits me. So let us question. Okwanko is in great fury. Then, yes, 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 we will all have a meeting. In the evening, the meeting starts off. Okay. So, one man uh, already started off talking in high grade pitch. He, he, what kind of plan of action are we going to take? So, when he's talking, Okwanko is standing on the last, uh, uh, you know, fringe of the crowd. Behind him, there is nobody. 
Okay, so he just looks back because he had seen some kind of a shadow moving behind him. So when he looks behind, he finds the English soldiers. Uh, uh, no, okay, policemen. You can call them policemen on the horses, trying to. You know, they have come to try stop the meeting. You have no right to conduct the meeting. Everybody looks at the. Uh, small, you know, they are uh, small, statured police constables, kind. Okay, like home guards. We know nobody cares for the home guards. Okay, uh, in that way, such kind of policemen have come. Everybody is like, oh no, oh go, come on, look at that English man. He has come to stop us. What will happen to us? What will happen to us? Guangku is so angry on seeing them. Again, you know, he is a person who can never control his anger. He just picks up his machete, that is the weapon that he has. He just brings that weapon on the body of one of the policemen, and there and then, there and then, the white the white policeman dies. And then he picks up the machete. And looks around, looks around towards the crowd. Towards the crowd, he looks around to just understand their reaction. Okay, he thought he thought that with this act, they will at least be administered with some kind of pride, Africanness, the spirit of nationality, and they will plunge forward, and then they would kill the other fellow. That was the anticipation of Okwanko. But when he looked at all of them, all of them had fear in their eyes. Their eyes, like they were like open, gaping mouth. <gasps> why did Okwanko do this? Oh, come on! Why did he do this again? No, one more time, Okwanko, you can't do this. How can we face the white man? He's so powerful. These kinds of uh, mixed responses he could read in all the faces of thousands of people. Within a split second, he takes that machete in his hands, rubs against the sand, removes the blood, and goes back home. Then next day, the commissioner comes. He talks to America. He comes to the village. Uh, where is he? Take me there. He comes to the village, and district commissioner, all the police, uh, big big people have come because he has killed one policeman, white policeman. It's a huge offense. So, take me there. He commands. Then Oberica says, "Come along with me." And then he takes him, the district commissioner, and all the other police officers through the backyard. There is, you know, about the compound, right? And uh, to the backyard where all the um, uh, trees and kitchen garden and a huge tree. So there is a huge, uh, all, all the beautiful trees are all there in the backyard. And then he stands at one place, Oberika, and then he says, he's there. And he shows up at the tree where the body of the superhero, Okwanko, is hanging, he is dead, he has committed suicide. Oberika said to the district commissioner, he lived like a lion, he today died like a dog. You drove him to die like a dog. Oh, so he did not want us to capture him alive. He died, he committed suicide to avoid us. Very interesting. Then, okay, then Oberika tells. See, we people, we, our, our, our religion denounces suicide. We don't touch the body. We have no right to touch the body. It is a sin to even give a proper burial to a person who leaves the body without the consent of the God. He has broken the rule. That's why we are waiting for the neighbors from the other community. They are, they are not related to us. We have requested them to 
bring the body down and throw him throw him in the forest not even giving him a proper burial and he cries then the district comes oh interesting very interesting okay so you don't touch huh? you don't touch people who have committed suicide so why okay it is very you know uh, very interesting because i am looking at the anthropo uh, uh, you know anthropology uh, that an that aspect i am writing a book on anthropology where you know i am uh, discussing the traditions and rituals of people who are uh, on the banks of the river niger so i will add this line okay maybe i will ri write a page about this man okwanku who had committed suicide after killing a white man um uh, why one one page why should i waste one page for him maybe half a page half a page is also too big for him let me condense it to one paragraph i will dedicate one paragraph to write about this man who had committed suicide for killing you know he was afraid of the white men that they would come and capture him and throw him in the jail to avoid that he committed suicide and people did not touch him his own people did not touch his body so he is focusing more on the uh, tradition here not on the death he is focusing on the interesting part that is the tradition and then he says oh nice interesting and then the novel ends the novel ends so as today i told you in the beginning that remember these are the traditions of igbo people a man who stood okwankwo a powerful masculine person who stood for the traditions rituals culture language of his community he was driven to commit suicide much against his own communities policies and why did he commit suicide not because the white man will come and take him no please he he did not commit suicide because he wants to run away from the white man no he committed suicide because he saw fear in the eyes of his people did he not look at their faces before he turned away from the crowd what he saw in them was not pride it was fear fear for the white man they have lost their african spirit they have lost their african ness they have lost their african identity and they have uh, accepted their inferior status by positioning the white man above them this had driven him to kill himself not the fear that the white man will kill him if he is alive this he did not appreciate that my people all have become boneless spineless spiritless they are all dead to me why should i expect anything from them so he knowing very well that his body will be thrown into the evil forest that he will see any ritual and that padale uh, enjoy knowing very well he has ended his life ha 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 hey shamala yes sir uh so this is k shamala please mic ne off cheskondi dayachesi k shamala meer mic ne off cheskondi already it is off ma'am ledamma mi venakal shabdalu na kinapadutunnayi ipudu off chestaru ipudu kuda off cheyaledu okay so it is it is now very clear after listening to the story of okwankwo
that the story of Okwango is not just the personal story of an African. It is the story of Africa. How African spirit got destroyed and how they allowed it to happen to them. The best example is the fear on the faces of the people. They allowed it. They accepted it. They made the white man sit over them and dance over their heads, considering him to be the ulterior, superior human being and the best race ever in this world. And God sent race, most civilized. That's how they felt people, poor people. Because the white man constantly conditioned the black man, you are uneducated, you are ignorant, you are black, you are ugly. You are uncivilized, you are unpolished, you are inferior. Only these words. So they agreed. Don't ever, uh, don't ever, this is a lesson for all of us. If somebody tells, you know, in your family that you are this, don't accept it. You are short, so what? Is that coming in the way of establishing my career or my personality? You are dark, so what? This is how you should be. Okay, so this you have very clearly seen how on two parallels, the life of Okwango as a personal um, and human, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, as a human being and the life of the African country or an African continent, African spirit and nationality, they went hand in hand. The fall of Okwango is the fall of Africa. How is it, ma? Now you can now you can chat. Only about the text. Now you can chat about the text. Are you all coming out of the trance? <laughs> no, no ma'am. What is no ma'am? Maheshwari, what does with no means? What is okay? Did you like this novel? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now you can now yes, you can one after the other tell me that why I have started this novel. Because if you have understood this novel clearly. You would understand any text under post-colonial literature in this world, be it African, be it Indian, be it Australian, be it New Zealand or whatever country. You will understand everything. That is the clarity that Chinua Achibe had given in the form of a counter discourse. He said, you, you drove, you drove us to the margins. You made us. See, how can, uh, now, the black, let us take the black concept, okay, black as a concept, black is the skin color, which is black race, Africans. See, before the entry of the white man, Only after the he started. Don't worry, uh, I uh, there is no power here, so I am on mobile data, and whenever the phone is ringing, the there is a network issue. Uh, uh, what uh, so there is? You see, everyone is black in Africa. Then why would you compare with anybody? So black, they don't even know. That they are just black. That's all. This is their complexion. So what is black? How can you say what is black? 
black is the color that's all but after the white man white, white man started defining defining black in with opposition to white in opposition to white like if white is beautiful black is ugly white is intelligent black is dumb dull white is uh, advanced civilized black is uncivilized so whatever the white man considers himself to be representing the concepts exactly opposite he gave he gave he gave to the black man the black man did not create it for himself are you able to get this point only after the white man's entry this gender uh, sorry racial discrimination happened i am white i am beautiful i am fair i am beautiful and even in our country we have this disease when you want to marry a girl you what is the first question is she fair is she slim is she tall wanted fair slim tall well educated modern corona vaccinated girl so one second please so the binary opposition yesterday we discussed the binary opposition who created it the white man had created it for his own benefit and the black man accepted it but now there is resistance now there is protest so the black man is asking you are defining yourself in contrast with us so your identity is based on our existence this is a very important point look at this the black man started questioning the white man how the white man's identity is totally dependent on the black man Thank <laughs> you. 